Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meenahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey peeps, today we're going to take a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called The Pioneers Program, and it's from GCT Studios. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page. You'll find a link up in the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. You don't have to take my word for it. You can go to the page, find out more information, and hopefully consider backing the project. Now, The Pioneers Program is a competitive game that takes place in a future apocalyptic wasteland. Land. You and a bunch of your scrappy survivors, you've gathered them around you as the leader, and you are trying to build up a settlement and just survive and grow and thrive and bring humanity back into the wasteland. You're going to do this by building structures, getting um, powerful personalities to help you out and to help you grow and uh, protect the community, getting resources, all these different things you would typically need to uh, rise up a settlement, raise up a settlement even. Uh, however, of course, the other players are not going to make it that easy for you. There are nasty events that might happen, uh, natural phenomena, unnatural phenomena like viral hordes and uh, mutations and things like that, as well as just other players and bandits who are going to try to foil you and take your stuff or make you get rid of your stuff just to keep you from getting ahead. Let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played with a prototype version of the game. So what you see here in this version may be different than what the final version has, just keep that in mind. But then we're going to come back and I'll let you know my final thoughts. The Pioneers program is a competitive game for three to six players. Each player is the leader of a settlement in the wasteland, trying to expand and grow. The goal of the game is to get victory points. If someone can gain four points and hold on to them until the end of any round, they are declared the winner as long as they got to that point before anyone else did in that round. If this doesn't happen, the game automatically ends after either round 6, 7, or 8, depending on when the arc alarm is flipped. At that point, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. To set up the game, you'll lay out the game board and populate it with the four decks the market, the waste, the survivors, and the projects. After shuffling, you'll put out four market cards face up as well as two projects. Three alarm tokens are shuffled face down and placed without looking underneath the round tracker for rounds five, six, and seven. Every player gets a player mat and a small HQ card matching their color. You also get a player token and a set of research tokens in the same color. Every player also gets two credit tokens and two response tokens, which are placed in your town, as well as three total cards from either the market or waste deck. This is determined via draft. Each player is dealt three market cards and two waste cards, and you will pick and pass until you've chosen three and discarded the others. If any of those cards can be played and you want to play them in your settlement, you can do so immediately and for free, but only for this one time. Finally, everyone gets a random survivor card. For now, ignore everything on the card except for the number and only focus on that, with the highest number going first. Each round of the game is broken down into three steps. The first step is taking actions. Every player in order by survivor will take one action, and once everyone's done, you will move the turn marker to turn two and do it again in order, so that everyone gets two actions. Third actions only happen when special game effects come into play. During a player's turn, they may play as many cards as they want, but they must spend one response token per card. Response tokens can also be spent as replacements for food tokens, to add plus one to combat rolls per token spent before you roll, or after you roll to perform a re-roll of all the dice. One action you can take is going to the market. You can pay credits to take a card from the market into your hand depending on its place in the lineup. When you later play a market card from hand, it will typically have a special ability, as well as a production and maintenance rating, which we'll get back to in a moment. Most of these cards are structures that add on to your settlement, but some are personalities, people who give you special abilities and, more importantly, a victory point, if you can keep them around by paying their costs every round. Another action is scouring the wastes. For this, you simply take the top card from the waste deck into your hand. 
You might draw a beneficial item, but it's also likely it will be an event, which might be harmful to you, but is usually only harmful to the other players or to everyone. Or it might be an attack or raid card. Attacks are played against other players who will be forced to roll the two dice with modifiers and win against a certain number, depending on the size of their settlement. If they fail, they may lose resources or structures or other valuable commodities. There are also raids, where the player who plays the card actively attacks another player and then they roll off. The waste deck also has its own personalities as well. The third action you can take is planning, which is simply taking response tokens from the stock based on the size of your town, either 3, 2, or 1, depending on whether you have a small, medium, or large town, respectively. A fourth action you can take is research. Depending on the size of your town, you can pay 1, 2, or 3 response tokens to put that many of your research tokens on one of the face-up projects. Multiple players can do this, but the first person to meet the threshold indicated on the card gets to take the card. If this happens, it will give you a powerful special ability and probably a victory point as well. At any time during one of your turns in this step, you can upgrade your headquarters, that is assuming that your town is large enough. A town size is dependent upon its structures, and if you have enough structures, you'll be able to upgrade your headquarters as well. Bigger headquarters allow for more storage, production, and research, among other things, including gaining a victory point and giving you special abilities. Instead of taking one of your two actions in this step, you can pass. You won't be able to participate anymore in step one, but you get to put your player token in the nearest open space by the market deck. We'll get back to this in a minute and why it's important. On to step two, which is maintenance. First, take all the resources you have coming to you from your icons in the top left corner of your settlement cards. You can only hold a certain number of resources based upon the size of your town. Next, you have the opportunity to exchange food for credits or vice versa, but only once. And lastly, you must pay the maintenance costs for any cards in your settlement. If you can't or won't pay these maintenance costs, those cards must be removed from your play area. The third step is determining the turn order. If you haven't yet done it because you didn't pass during the first step, now, in order, those players will place their turn tokens in the space closest to the deck. This determines the order for picking new survivors. Survivors determine initiative order, give you combat bonuses, and also have special abilities. This is why you may want to pass in the first step, even if it means giving up an action, so that you can get a more preferential pick of the survivors. After this, a new round begins in the new order of survivors. When you get to round 5 and on, you'll need to flip over one of the alarm tokens. If the token flipped is the arc alarm, that means the next round will be the last round. If it comes to that, it's whoever has the most points who will be the winner. But if someone has four at the end of a round, they will win. That is the Pioneers program. I think the most interesting thing about, well, there's a couple of interesting things about uh, the Pioneers program. One of them is the theme. And, of course, the theme of post-apocalyptic wasteland is not new to board games, of course, or any kind of tabletop gaming. But it is interesting to come at it from the angle of building up a settlement, which is something you typically see in heavy Euro games set in medieval times. Not the dinner, restaurant, and theater in Orlando, but actual medieval times. <laughs> and uh, so it's interesting to see it in a waste, apocalyptic wasteland setting. You're not just, it's not just a run and gun miniatures game of shooting down mut mutations, although that can happen in this game. Rather, this is a resource management game, which is, I think, somewhat more unique to this setting. But on top of that, you also have the fact that when you look at the game, when you, perhaps when you first saw the, the first image in my overview of everything laid out there, the player maps, all the different cards and decks and tokens and all these different things, you might be like, whoa, this is like a, it's, it's a heavy Euro game, isn't it? But no, it's really not. This game is very easy to learn. It's very simple and fast to teach to other players. And it's very straightforward, which is not to say that the game does not have important decisions to be made. Quite the opposite, in fact. There's a lot of different things you have to decide right from the very get-go. Which cards are you going to keep? Which cards are you going to play down to the table? Um, what when In future turns, you, depending on how much uh, bidding power you have or how much choosing power you have um, on the track of determining how many what survivors you can take, that's a huge decision. Of, like, what order are you going to go in next turn? What special ability are you going to get to use? Um, what bonus might you potentially get? That's huge, as well as what cards to choose from the market, so on and so forth. There's tons of decisions here, and yet, to my original point, it's not that the game is overwhelming. Again, it's very simple and easy to learn and very straightforward from round to round to round. It's the kind of game where 
it's clearly aimed at you know people who would appreciate the kind of decision making that's in it and yet you could play it with casual gamers as well you could play it with younger gamers now of course there is some uh post-apocalyptic imagery here so that's entirely up to you but i don't think there's anything that objectionable here either so all these different things sort of conflate to make it uh, a more accessible game than you would think just from looking at it it definitely has um the decision making and strategic edge to it and yet manages especially with the theme which you know a lot of people love the sci science fiction post-apocalyptic uh, post-apocalyptic mad max type theme uh fallout for instance uh it those things together really make it more accessible than you would, uh, at first glance, give it credit for. So if you are the type of person who likes resource management, if you like these types of themes, if you just like uh, any kind of like hand management, settlement building type of game, definitely go to the Kickstarter page and find out more for yourself and hopefully consider supporting the project. There will be a link up in the top corner of your screen as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Go over there, follow the link, find out more information, and follow and find out more about the Pioneers program from GCT Studios. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting our sponsors. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.